just three games left. Is there anything that you want to do experimentally just to take a look at with these last few games? Uh, we's, we've discussed a few things. Um, it depends on if we sit some of the vets, uh, take a look at some other guys in some different roles, but still to be determined. Uh, obviously, the back to back, and uh, we do want to finish strong, but I want to get a look at some things also. So a lot of it depends on Fred, Dylan, and Jeff, what we do with those guys. Assuming when you took the job, one of the first things you looked at was like, all right, we're 30th defensively, we're going to fix that. What were the things that you thought you were going to need to do to fix it, and what has allowed you to fix it? A uh, big part was bringing in personnel that aided that. Um, you know, Dylan and Fred, you know, guys that have defensive mentality are two of the better ones at their position in the league. Um, but then it was just breaking habits and um, instilling that mindset more. So uh, it's about effort and, and you know, really competing on that end and not just, uh, you know, playing on one end. And so um, as much as we relied on the vets to kind of come in and, and uh, rub off on these guys, we were pretty demanding on that end, knowing that we had a really good chance if we improved in that area and just got to the middle of the pack. And so we're taking a big step as far as that. And uh, credit to our guys. I think we had, you know, a lot of versatility and size. And uh, some guys were not known as defenders, but they've taken that challenge and really improved. And so uh, all of the above, but really just coming in and trying to change the mindset. How important was it in the development of your, your young players to have important games and important possessions? Yeah, it's been big, and that's that's why you know the goal of the playoffs or the play-in is a little disappointing because that would have been you know the ultimate step to really play in a meaningful game, kind of one one on one game uh, scenario, life on the line, and so um, that was our goal. Obviously, and fall, falling short of that is a little disappointing, but. Um, just winning basketball at this time of year is different for the guys that have been here. Uh, really haven't played um, for much this late in the season. And so to have those uh, opportunities and, you know, really going on that run late, get us back in the, in the mix, uh, was good for us. And so it, it put a lot of stress on every game, importance on every game, and, uh, you know, did well with the streak. And then losing right after that was a little, a little disappointing. But um, playing in those games is going to do a lot for guys going, going forward. Have you seen any growth particularly on the road that's allowed you guys to start winning some games after the All-Star break on the road? I don't know if it's specifically on the road. I think, uh, you know, I've said it all year that we were really good at home and poor on the road to start, but uh, we're in a lot of games, lost some overtime games and had a chance of some games we gave away by missing shots late. But um, I don't know if it's anything specific about the road, more so than us just playing better basketball overall and kind of grasping uh, what we were wanting them to do. And so um, the overall improvement and guys stepping up and growing in their roles with Alpi early, Jabari, towards the middle and then Jalen taking that big big jump, uh, I think helped us in general overall, not just a home or road thing. Obviously the streak was on, during both home and road games and it coincided with us winning more, more road games. For those of us that don't see you all the time, what was the jump, what was the impetus for the jump for Jalen? Why such a big jump after the All-Star break? I would say just really starting to understand uh, what we were asking of him. Uh, obviously, when he's been a pretty elite scorer already at this young stage in his career, you know, 22 points a game in the second year. And so we required more of him than he had probably been asked to do from a, a holistic standpoint on the court. And so, um, you know, defending, uh, being a playmaker, reading defenses, as well as scoring and doing the other things he naturally does, requires a little bit more, you know, uh, thinking to it. And at times you can kind of see his, his mind spinning a little bit. But once he really got comfortable with the all-around things and us, you know, continuing to hammer home some things, uh, he took off as far as that. So I think it just calmed him down and um, helped his offensive abilities, which are pretty natural for him. But it was a matter of getting everything else you know, on board, and I think he, he really took those challenges early, took a little bit of time, but once he got those down, he took off offensively as well. You were talking earlier this week about his durability. Does, he gets hit a lot and hits the court a lot. Does a guy need to almost learn how to take a hit or how to fall and stay to, to avoid injuries? Yeah, I think so, uh, you know, and, and I, like I said, I'm proud of him for playing all the games, and, you know, that was Tari and Jabari last year, and, you know, KJ Martin played all the games last year, so it was some guys that, for, especially in this young in their career and how the NBA has gone nowadays, it's impressive that they are playing all the games. And yeah, yeah I do think so, especially a guy that's as athletic and high flying and that high in the air at times and uh, takes those hits. It is beneficial to learn how to fall and, and to avoid serious injury. And so you can kind of see the opposite of guys who don't fall well or fall you know, poorly all the time, you can see they're going to probably have an injury or two early on in their career, and it usually comes to fruition.
I was looking at players that are like Jabari, <coughs> six, nine, six, ten, long, lanky. It seems like year three. You know, there's a picture Jalen Johnson's done this year in Atlanta. Kaminga did in Golden State. If you go back, I keep going. But yeah. is there something about that type of player that that seems to you to be the right amount of time? I mean, in his last few weeks, he's been great too. So maybe he's about to do it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's that body type or specifically that, but um, in general, young guys take a little time, and then uh, year three is when most of them take the real jump. Uh, I think he's really improved this year. Even the, even the way he finished his rookie year, it was on a high note, uh, and kind of carried over to summer league and all the workouts and, and kind of hit the ground running this year. So he's taken some nat natural steps and some good progression as far as that, and I look for him to do more next year, but um, I think it might just be young guys in general that take that bigger, biggest leap in their third year. So there's something about having worked with Will Hardy in the past that gives you confidence about his ability to kind of work with the Jazz through this rebuild and, and make them a better team coming out of it? Yeah, I mean, he's he's learned from some of the best. Um, you know, he's been around in a lot of different situations. I think the our year in Boston together probably was really beneficial for him to kind of get a different mindset and philosophies on things, but uh, more so than anything, he's going to not skip any steps. He's going to stay the course and uh, stay resilient as far as that. He's not a guy who you know sweeps it under the rug. He's gonna stay on his guys, and uh, you know, especially with these younger teams and, and going through some things, you know, he's the right leader to you know make this team come out on the other side. And so, um, from a standpoint of preparation and everything he puts the, you know the Jazz through, I have no doubt that he'll get them right. And you know, sometimes it's it's what the organization might be trying to do, and you know, take a step back. But um, he's going to stay on the guys, and I have no doubt he'll get them turned around. We saw it already you know, early in the first year, and at times with the young core just playing harder for him, and and some of the things he's implemented, I have no doubt he'll get it right. I mean, greatest steps you've seen him take late in the season, and what's next for him? I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, playing a different role uh, than he ever has in his life. Um, you know, he's a different role. He's asked to play with the starters. Um, when when guys have gone down, um, I'll be out of lineup. Now he's you know kind of playing a hybrid. You know, three, four, five, and so a guy who's played the ball, point guard a position, had the ball in his hands his whole life. We ask him to you know be a screener, be a guy that plays in the dunker and does everything else. And so, um, you know. Minus the injury, the first 20 plus games, he's always t he's taking these incremental steps throughout the season, whether it was at the back of point guard or now in his role. And so, um, yeah, he's he's growing every game. It's like a lot of firsts for him, you know, regardless of um, position and things he's going through, and picks up pretty quickly and, and competes at a high level already. So um, proud of what he's done this year, and yeah, want a strong finish from him, but also we know the future's bright there. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.